Flying Fortress is a US heavy bomber that saw service through most of World War II, primarily on the Western Front in raids against Germany, although occasionally it was used tactically to bomb targets of opportunity, such as large enemy formations, railway hubs, and fortifications. The Flying Fortress gets its nickname from its vast array of defensive armament, up to a total of 13 50 caliber heavy machine guns on later models. Perhaps contrary to expectation, the B-17 wasn't very heavily armoured, only crew positions and bulkheads had any significant protection. The B-17's resilience lies in its rigid aluminium construction and its sheer size. The B-17's fuselage is made from a series of aluminium rings and aluminium strips that act as circumferential and longitudinal stiffeners respectively. This is in turn covered by an aluminium skin. This creates a durable, rugged fuselage that can withstand damage and maintain structural integrity, but it isn't necessarily bulletproof, hence the reinforced crew positions. These images are a testament to the fuselage's toughness. This B-17 was struck by a BF-109 in the rear fuselage, almost cutting it in two, but the aircraft stayed in one piece and the pilot was able to fly back to base. The wings and tail are constructed differently to the fuselage. The wings are made up of two long spars along the length of the wing, and a number of truss ribs across it, with spaces for the fuel tanks. The tail uses spars arranged in a tight square pattern. The B-17 has a crew of ten. The pilot, co-pilot, navigator, bombardier, who also acts as nose gunner, flight engineer, who also acts as dorsal gunner, radio operator, who also mans the single flexible gun mount behind the dorsal gun, two waste gunners, ventral ball turret gunner, and tail gunner. All defensive weaponry on the EMG variants are 12.7mm Browning 50 calibre heavy machine guns. As previously stated, the only parts of the plane with additional armour protection are the crew positions and bulkheads. Most of the aircraft doesn't have any armour plating, but the construction itself is fairly resilient. There are three fuel tanks on each wing, in the left, middle and right of the span. On longer missions, feeder tanks near the tip could be used, as well as extra tanks in the bomb bay. Each engine nacelle contains its own oil supply in a small tank. Beginning with the B-17C, all fuel tanks are self-sealing. Protective armour plating is present in the following areas. The bulkhead between the bombardier's position in the nose and the cockpit. The backrest of the seats of the co-pilot and pilot. The bulkhead behind the cockpit leading to the fuselage. The radio operator seat. The area around each waste gunner position. And the plate in front of the tail gunner, protecting him from rear attack. The cockpit glass is 40mm thick as is the plexiglass nose, glass in the ball turret, and in the tail. Priority targets include the engines, control surfaces, and fuel tanks. The B-17 can run comfortably on three engines, but on two engines it will struggle to maintain altitude, even with military power. On one engine, it can't stay airborne for long. The various turrets can cover virtually all angles of attack. The key is minimising the number of turrets that can fire on the attacker at any one time, and minimising the time spent within range of the guns. Attacking from below means only the ball turret has line of fire. It also means the player using gunner view can't see the attacking aircraft, only the user's name tag if playing in arcade or realistic battles. Also consider a sweeping pass from 2 o'clock or 10 o'clock. Not only are you a difficult target to track, there is an opportunity to target the cockpit and engines. A head-on tack was also a possibility, and was a favourite of many German pilots in reality. It's a little riskier against the Model G because of the chin turret, so consider coming in from slightly below to hamper the line of sight of this turret. There's also the sweeping dive from the side. This is a reduced risk form of the front quarter sweeping pass as you are further from the bomber's direction of travel, meaning you are going across the bomber's firing arcs instead of straight into them. However, your window of opportunity is smaller, so less hits will be scored. Sitting on a B-17's tail is a sure way to get yourself shot down, or critically damaged. It does provide an opportunity for sustained fire, but that cuts both ways. The gunners have a clear shot at you as well. In short, spend as little time near the B-17 as possible. Come in fast, give him hell, then get out of there. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Reach for the Sky. See you soon.